Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We have a powerful show for you today. Yes. When you look around the world at all the problems of the world, sometimes it's difficult to cope. But on today's program, you'll be reminded that there is no problem too big for God. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. You'll meet one grandmother whose story illustrates the power of faith in the midst of uncertainty. Nellie shares about adopting her two granddaughters. One of them grows up to become a world-class gymnast, Simone Biles. Yeah, Simone has a powerful testimony, yeah. but encouraging word. How could you encourage someone today about the uncertainty and being able to survive it and live through it mm. to thrive? I think that's called faith in the Bible, right? All right. Because without uncertainty, there's no faith required. If, every, if we have all the answers and everything's figured out, and then I think we have a you know, delusional sense of control, but faith is actually stepping into the unknown. And God is, that's what he loves to do. He mm. loves to take us there, and, and he's good to be on the other side of that. What do you say? Well, in uncertainty, make sure that you don't try to focus on the things that you don't understand, but simplify. Mm. Because a lot of times we start looking around and we're thinking, what, and, and we're, we're playing the guessing game. Right. And that's why it's very important. First of all, get a word, understand where the destination is, mm. and then baby steps, because you don't have to rush it to get to that's where you're going. So true. But that's you so have true. to move along. Yeah. It's a cinch by the answer, trial by the mile. Yes. You know, we have another powerful story today as, as you'll see how God helped Nick overcome PTSD. And we have some interesting viewer questions coming up. That's right. It's our new segment called Ask Anything, where viewers submit questions about God and Lori and I are going to respond. We're looking forward to it, but first, Nick's life was falling apart as a result of PTSD. This is how God restored him. Mm. I had been in conflict. I'd been to Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan. I'd seen the whole worst of the worst. I'd seen so much death and so much nastiness in third world countries. And I didn't see God as a positive light in my life. I, I just never thought any, any type of God would allow something so horrific to happen. Nick Lee served in several military combat tours with the US Marines and Army between 1997 and 2006. During that time, he witnessed horrific violence and carnage. After his discharge, undiagnosed PTSD made it difficult for Nick to return to civilian life. I, I still catch myself scanning. I'm always on alert. It was numerous friends and family members telling me, look, dude, you're not right. Something's wrong here. No one acts like that. No one does and responds to a situation like that. No one would say that in this situation. Yeah. And I would dismiss it. In 2009, Nick married Fresca, the woman who'd had his son 12 years earlier. She had since become a Christian, and when they married, she didn't know about his PTSD or his anger toward God. I wanted to find a man who also sought to live a godly life. I wanted a godly man. I put on a good show and put on a good smile and told her what she wanted to hear for quite some time. I wasn't a Christian still. We just butted heads with that. You know, this is how I believe, this is how you believe. Let's just move forward and it wasn't gonna happen. It, it caused a lot of dissension, a lot of frustrations with us. Their marriage quickly descended into chaos and Nick's PTSD took its toll on their new family. There were times when he would just scream, scream at our son, scream at me. Um, and I didn't understand why was, his reactions were just so strong and so explosive. I pushed her away more than anything. I, do, I did whatever I could to push her away. Eight years of what I consider a lot of times of hellish situations where no one around me could understand. Only God could understand what was going on. After eight years of marriage, Fresca and Nick eventually divorced. Even though they were separated, Fresca continued to pray for Nick. I would write out these prayers and ask God to open his eyes, to save him. And Nick had been threatening his, his life. And even though I no longer wanted to be married to Nick, I would pray for his salvation. After the divorce, Nick drank excessively and was suicidal. Everything in my, in my whole life was going down. 
and I was just, it was bad. I had been so mad at everything for so long. I had contemplated rope in the garage. I had contemplated extension cords to hang myself. Um, I, I just, I couldn't get myself to, to do it. Um, I knew I had my pistol. Um, I sat there and I just kind of willed the courage to do it. I had a full chamber, full six round, 357 chamber loaded. And I pulled the trigger. And it didn't go off. Nick collapsed to the floor, overwhelmed and unsure why the gun didn't go off. Then he heard God speak to him. And I heard him speak to me as if we're having this conversation right now. And he said, you must stop this. You need to stop the way you're living. You're going to die if you continue to live this way. Follow me. I, I just right there, I started telling him everything I had done, why I hated him. And I sat there and I just repented everything I had done that I could think of at that moment. I was harboring all this hate for so long and frustration and, and, and just angry. And it was just like it just just went away. And I just I, I just I gave it all to him. I said, you're, you're, you've got it. Nick surrendered his life to Jesus. The next week, Fresca agreed to meet with him to hear what happened. Immediately, I could see that this was not the same Nick. He was radiating a sense of peace, and he looked like 10 years younger. The tone in his voice was soft, was gentle. God had taken all of his pain and his anger and replaced it with joy and peace. I see things so much differently than I had before, and I know that if I, I can't control it, I'm not gonna try. It's up to him. He's got the one all the control. I mean, he knows what's going on. You know, I don't. I just have to hope that, you know, he shows me the right way. Nick and Fresca were remarried shortly after. Fresca says Nick is a different person since the night God spared his life. He would ask me to read the Bible with him, and that was just unheard of before. And it's a, it's a wonderful experience in church now. That's when I feel the closest to Nick. He's, he's been there when I didn't really know he was for a long time. And then to look back now, I say thank you, because I'm sure you were the reason why that bullet didn't take me. And I'm sure there's a reason why I'm still here. And I am give my life to him because he saved this one. I'm grateful to the Lord every day. I think about this every single day, and it's been two years now. Nick wasn't even asking for God's help. Nick was going to take his life, and he should have been dead. But God's grace came in and just changed everything. You know, when you see Nick, he wasn't even asking God to intervene. He was literally taking his life in that moment when he heard from God. And in that moment, God stopped everything and turned his complete life around. You know, that's really where most people just don't understand that God has made you in his image and in his likeness, and he doesn't want anything to damage your life. So many times we do things, and because there's actions that we take, there are reactions. But I'm glad that God will intervene with a greater purpose in our life. You know, he lives every day with a reminder that the gun didn't go off. And I believe that it's not necessarily just what God did with Nick, but I believe he's saying that right now. Don't do it. I heard it in my spirit that there's more for you, baby. You're going to make it, but you've got to trust him today like never before, and you got to go all in. I know you said, wow, did that preacher just say what I thought he did? Yes, because those are the words, you're going to make it, that I heard the Holy Spirit say. Because when God spoke to Nick, he says, I have a plan for you. This is Jeremiah 29 and 11 in, the, in flesh and blood. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You've got a future and a hope. It may not be the way that you think it should work out, but it's going to work out for your good. I want to get something into your hands. A new day. one 855 700 Prayer partners are standing by. But right now, ball up your hands. Come on. Pray this with me. Jesus, I can't do it anymore. I let go of the steering wheel. Now let go 
and say this, Jesus, take the wheel. I confess my sins. I thank you for your purpose for my life. I receive it now in Jesus' name. If that's you and you've called, we're praying for you and we're here for you. But the number on the screen now, it's not just a good bumper sticker. Call it 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. And now a beautiful lesson on what real raw love looks like. Hmm. Hey, Kagan Wesley here. I'm obviously not a suit and tie kind of guy, but I promise you I am a 23-year-old man that is madly in love with Jesus. Today I'm going to pull from the text of Matthew chapter 22. This is a lesson that we all learn, and it's a lesson that we will never graduate from. It's the lesson of love. Matthew 22, someone is asking our Jesus what the greatest commandment of all time is. Jesus' reply is to love the Lord your God with all of your mind, heart, soul, and strength. And then to look to your left and look to your right behind you in front of you and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's really what he did. He loved his father. And by loving his father, he served his brothers and sisters. Jesus isn't wanting religion. He isn't wanting the rules and the regulations. He's wanting a relationship, a real, raw, romantic relationship. I like to say it that our God is a lover looking for a lover. And that lover is you. He doesn't want someone that'll just follow his law because they have to. He wants someone that would love them because they want to. Maybe you're kind of going through some situations and some circumstances, maybe some addictions, hardships, or heartaches. Today, I want to tell you that our God that's a lover is looking for you to have a real love relationship with him. And the struggle is real, but so is our Savior. And in those struggles, you will see Jesus as your Savior coming in to save you and allowing his forgiveness to free you. He's a big God that likes to do big things, and he wants to take your little life and do something large with it. Today, I want to encourage you to fall in love with the Lord. Fall so in love with him that you fall out of love with your lifestyle. Listen, Jesus wants you. He desires to have a relationship with you, or he would not have died for you. So today, know that you have a God who cares, who sees you, and who knows you and is in pursuit of you. Simone Biles won our hearts and five medals, four of them gold, at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. She says her time with her Olympic teammates is something she will never forget. To be part of the final five was really amazing. It's something I'll cherish in my heart forever. I um, mean, it's something that we'll always be connected with because we did so well at the games. And the bond that we've had, we're like sisters, so we really are good friends and we want the best for each other. So the success that we brought back to the States and shared with them was something unbelievable. Simone is the most decorated American gymnast and a four-time all-around gymnastics champion. A testament to her love of the sport that began when she was a child. I guess I love the freedom of the sport. There was no right or wrongs that you could do. They you didn't have to have one particular body type. You made everything mold into what you were born with. So I think God gives every individual something special in mind was talent. So to never take it for granted, which my dad always told me, don't waste God's gift that he gave you because it's like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and one day I'll be too old to do gymnastics. So for now I have to use it to the best of my ability. Her journey to the top has not been easy and began with a turbulent home life. My biological mom was suffering with drugs and alcohol, I do believe, and so we were taken into foster care. And we were in foster care for a little bit until my grandparents decided to take us in. So then that's kind of when our life reformed and everything. Her mother, Nellie, says God opened her heart to adopt Simone and her sister, Adria. It was meant to be, I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, nothing was supposed to be different. And it's the best decision we've ever made. Since then, 
Nellie has encouraged Simone to put her life and career in God's hands. I am a very prayerful person, so I encourage uh, my children to do the same thing too, to pray. And I know it doesn't matter what situation you're ever in. Um, you just put it in the hands of the Lord and he's gonna, he's gonna walk you through it. I was taught that you can go to him for anything and he's the one that directs your life. She would always tell us if you don't know, leave it up to God, pray to him about it. Simone says she sees God's hand in her success and also in her disappointments, like the time she failed to make the 2011 team. I didn't make national team, so I was super upset about that, but I knew that it was God's way of telling me I needed to go home, train harder, so that next year I could make it happen. So I believe that some obstacles that we've had always work out for the better because God knows that without those, you wouldn't be as strong as you were. Nellie says her proudest moments have come from Simone's ability to make hard decisions and to stick by them. The fact that Simone made difficult decisions at a very early age made her a stronger person. I think the proudest moment that I had of Simone's life is her telling me she wants to go on the elite track of gymnastics to compete for her country. The little girl told me that, and she did it. In her new book, Courage to Soar, Simone shares her life story, including her struggles with body image. I didn't struggle with like weight issues. It was just more of body image um, because I didn't look like the other kids in my class. I looked more like, like the boys. I was stronger than most of the girls, stronger than most of the boys too even. Whenever I was younger, I would try to hide my muscles. So I'm like, it's not that pretty, but now I'm just like, muscles are beauty. And I think people are starting, slowly starting to realize that you can be muscular and a female and be beautiful at the same time. So I think it's important for kids and gymnasts particularly to understand that because we wouldn't be able to do what we do if we didn't have the muscular body build. As she looks to the future, Simone says she will continue to give all she's got with the talent that God gave her. And she encourages others to do the same. You're so young when you think of all these dreams and you're like, oh, it'll never come happen. But once you put hard work and dedication into it, you can really achieve anything. I think the mind is one of the strongest things you have. I hope before I end my career, I give all of my energy and effort and my talent towards that sport before I finally like hang up my grips and say I'm done. You know, when Nellie decided to adopt, I, I can appreciate that she was saying it could be a really tough decision for her. I mean, maybe adopting would steal from maybe some of Nellie's goals and dreams for her life, but boy, do we ever see the unfolding of the opposite of that. I mean, Nellie's choice to adopt has enriched her life. I've heard from so many people who choose either fostering or adoption. It's not because it's always easy, but it's so fulfilling. And in every case that I talk to, it's required that step of faith that, you know, faith is like you're stepping into the unknown. You don't have it all figured out on the other side. That's how God wants us to live our life though, is by faith. Do you need some faith today? Maybe you're right on the edge of a decision. You don't know what's on the other side. And maybe like Nelly, you think, oh, there can only be maybe risk or, or maybe bad things out there. God says, you trust me, I will help you put your hairy toe over that line. Now, hopefully your toes aren't hairy, but you know what I'm saying. Take a step out, take a risk. That's called faith. When we live by faith, like Nellie, God rewards us so fully. So maybe you're like her and you're thinking of adoption. I have friends that fostered for many, many years and found the, that to be a rich experience. But in their fostering years of, I believe it was more than 15 years, God told them to adopt some of these children. Well, their families more than doubled now and they would never change it for the world. Is God asking you to do something that's risky? Step out in faith. He loves to give us everything we need when we do that. Father, I pray for those right now that they're sitting there thinking, hmm, You've put something on my heart. I pray for faith to increase. Give them courage that it's good what's on the other side. And even if there's difficulties, which there will be, you're gonna give them everything that they need. Help them to say yes today in Jesus' name. 
We'll be right back with another segment of Ask Anything. He founded one of the world's largest television ministries. Welcome folks to the 700 Club. Formed a global relief organization demonstrating God's love in action. Thank you for helping us. Established a leading university. Graduates, flip your tassels. And became a New York Times best-selling author. Now, Pat Robertson wants to share with you significant insights learned from a lifetime in the Word of God. In his latest book, 10 Laws for Success, Keys to Win in Work, Family, and Finance, you'll discover the laws that govern success and how they can work for you. A real-world guidebook that can revolutionize your life. Call now to receive Pat Robertson's latest book, 10 Laws for Success. Well, it's that time again. You've been sending in your questions. Ask anything. Ms. Hartshorn, okay. who's up? Okay, I'll fire to you first. Okay. Brian, question on forgiveness. Okay. Jesus said to turn the other cheek. Doesn't this leave the door open to being used by people? Hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. Because one of the things that you have to know about Jesus is he's saying we have to give people uh, as much opportunity because he said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Now, he doesn't want you to be a doormat, but he does say, how many times do we forgive? The disciples said something, and I love it in the Passion Version, and they said in Luke 17, 1 through 6, he says, betrayal is inevitable, but great devastation will come to the one, the guilty party. Did you hear that? But then after he said this in the fifth verse, and it says, upon hearing this, the apostle says, Lord, you must increase our faith. Mm. So it's going to take faith to do this. Yeah. But when you forgive, doesn't mean that you forget. Yeah. It means you just continue to move on and you right. put it in God's hands. That's right. All right? That's right. Ms. Hartshorn, okay. are you ready for it? Yeah. This is the question. I've heard of God giving people a peace that tra passes all understanding. How can we get that kind of peace from God? Well, it's actually found in a person. You see, we think peace is just an emotion and something that comes and goes, but Scripture tells us in Ephesians 2.14, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace. So mm. peace is in a person, and we have a relationship with Jesus. How do we keep growing in peace? Well, that's where that verse in Philippians comes in to mind. Four times, Paul tells us to pray and peace will come. He says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God four times and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. This idea of guarding your heart and guarding their peace is like a sentinel standing at the door. He is going to make sure that the peace that is found in Jesus stays in you and is present in you, but you've got to pray. Actually, maybe more than once, four times, continue to pray, ask for peace, and you'll experience it. Amen. Well, that's good. Keep the questions coming because yeah. we really enjoyed you. Keeping us on our toes as well. Yeah. And Ask Anything is here for you. So uh, don't miss it. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I'm a prayer partner with 700 Club Canada. We have an amazing team waiting to pray with you, and we're available every day. We want to make it easy for you to connect with us. All you have to do is pick up your phone and call us at our toll-free number, 1-855-759-0700. And don't forget to let us know how God answered your prayers. We want to celebrate in your victories too. Our number again is 1-855-759-0700. We look forward to connecting with you today. Well, we're really enjoying these segments, Ask Anything. Believe it or not, we're kind of on the hot seat. Yes. But we really value you asking your questions. We'll give it our best shot. We want to, together, keep learning about God's Word and about God and what it means to follow Him, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, Lunch Bucket Christianity, so we're going in with you. So thank you. Keep them coming. Yeah. And uh, thank you for 
just taking the journey with us. You know, as we are now in 2020, and it's that iconic year. We're believing it's a year of wisdom, but it's a year of, of God's divine favor as well. We need your help to continue this mission that God has given us here in Canada, and that is that none should perish, but all would come to repentance, but seeing people live their best life. And uh, when you link arms with us, it allows us to go into more places in yeah. Canada. But as a monthly partner, we'd love to get something into your hands. If you haven't become one, maybe this is the time that you can, and we'll get into your hands the 10 laws of success for just $20 a month or your best gift. Mm -hmm. We would love it if you call now, 1-855-759-0700, per partners are standing by. Just recently, Brian, uh, we were out in BC and we were um, having, collecting more Canadian stories. Yes. And can I just say that a lot of viewers ask, you know, why don't we have more Canadian stories? Well, really, it's about your support. Yes. We need your support in order to tell more Canadian stories. So if you love our Canadian stories, that's a great reason to partner with us. And we met some of our donors out there and they shared stories. This woman shared a story about she actually, uh, someone was praying on the television about healing in, in her leg. Yes. And she walked forward and put her hand on the TV. She said, well, I don't know if this is true, but if it's for me, I'm going to take it. Yes. And honestly, Brian, she said she turned to the kitchen Praise and her God. leg was healed. Yes. And that was 20 years ago, and she's still walking in that freedom, and this program continues Praise to Jesus. grow her faith. Yes. Right? Now, that's yeah. what it's all about. So you know? encouraging yeah. to us. You know, even today, we've been talking about PTSD. We've been talking about yeah. some other issues. Uh, let's pray for that yeah. and just believe God for our viewers because we're here for you. We really believe we're in this together. Absolutely. And, you know, Ruth from Ontario wants prayer because she's suffering from severe anxiety, Brian. Mm. I believe that's a issue across our nation and Sylvia in Saskatchewan. Yeah. Nervous and traumatic memories. We need to pray for healing yeah, in the Yeah, let's mind. pray that. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for healing across our nation emotionally, mentally, physically, relationally, spiritually. You are the great healer. Would you do a magnificent work of healing? And even now as I pray this, that those who need healing would reach out towards that TV and they would receive it in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. And we believe that tsunami is coming across this nation and the blood of Jesus now heals delivers and saves yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to leave you with a power verse, James 1 and 2. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith, it produces perseverance. Hey, stand on that. We love you. God bless. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.